All right, you magnificent bastards. Forgot to mention when we recorded the episode that we are kicking off the dry week. Today, Friday the 26th at noon. Uh, it's going to go until August 2nd. That's a Friday at noon. And as always, the dry weeks are optional. That means, uh, you know, you can choose to do this with us or not. But the reason why we do it is to make sure we're taking a little uh, short-term break from, from alcohol, from whiskey, making sure that it's not catching up to us. Well, it's not sneaking up and causing any kind of unexpected problems there. Uh, during the dry week, we're not going to be producing content. We're going to actually be planning, mostly relaxing, but planning. Chad, are you doing the dry week with us? Nope, I'm on vacation. Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Day Friday. Daniel Rex Whiskey, Rare Whiskey Day, or uh, these are the whiskeys that often have, you know, not a lot of distribution, not necessarily yeah. huge brands that are super rare and expensive, but yeah. whiskeys that very often are going to be craft, don't have a lot of, you know, markets that they have penetrated just yet. All the same, Magnificent Bastards make a donation and we're going to do a review. So if you are so lucky as to be in the area of a whiskey that we happen to like, That's a long you are welcome. If we don't like it, then it obviously means it's a bad whiskey because our opinion is sacrosanct. That's true. What if somebody is brand new? <laughs> they don't realize that's a joke. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. Opinions are subjective. Okay. okay. So, what's your first impression of this bottle? Uh. Well, I mean, what are you talking what about? What about the whiskey in the bottle? It's a little light. And. But, uh, was it cloudy? Super cloudy. Yeah. So, uh. These guys are just down the street from us okay. in Dripping Springs. They're Swift Distill, yeah, right. Okay. Swift Distillery. They are super serious about doing 100 percent of every part of the process all themselves. It. It's Kevin. Can I say? Or, sorry, it, Kevin. Nick and Amanda Swift. Can I say it smells cloudy? It, I'm gonna tell you what I think it smells like, but first let's thank Here's Mitchell it. Nestor for the bottle. Mitchell Nestor, you magnificent bastard. Yeah. Okay, so I this? hesitate to talk about this one because they're right their neighbors, basically. It reminds me of of a, that slight baby sick note you have from a newborn is that's before it gets truly disgusting throw up when it's still kind of cute throw up. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's what I get in the nose. Then after that, yeah. Then there's all of these malty round. I'm fruit saying and the, the malt is what I get. I get a non-sweet malty like a agricultural graininess in the malt. Yeah. Not so much the sweet. Right. I don't get a lot of sweet on that nose when I'm getting like the earthy, malty, agricultural, grainy type of Very grass. Yeah, and kind of like yeah. a musty. But the first thing from a distance, now the thing is, if you leave this glass open for a little bit, you sort of acclimate to that and it goes away. Okay. Um, they don't chill filter, which is cool. That's why the bottle's cloudy. Then they proof down to 43. Okay. Which means it's cloudy even in the bottle. Okay. Right. If yeah. they kept it above 46, like 46 50, yeah. it would have looked more clear in the bottle. Yeah. This is, th these are the, the kind of characters and notes that, the story that often I associate with these kind of notes are usually people that are trying to do it uh, with an emphasis on flavor mm -hmm. and everything else be damned. Yes, absolutely the true. The cost and, you know, the uh, the number, the volume we can make. I think make they're probably like, doing that. That's being put in the back burner. They're There's starting with used oak. Yeah. And then they're finishing in sherry cask, just like in Scotland. Well, I say that because there is a um, intensity to that nose, a richness to that nose. Hmm. That whenever somebody is trying to thread the needle of making some money and getting some good flavors in there, it's like, nah, you don't land on these flavors. It tastes like it smells only a lot more funky. Yeah, I wish it was, and I rarely say this, I wish there was more complexity to the sweetness. Mm -hmm. I wish it leaned more into that sweet uh, direction. Instead of the pure grass funk. I well, would be interested to see what happened to this like, if they let it get old. I think there's like a nutmeg, cinnamon, apple vibe. Those are going to be the sweeter elements that I'm getting. But I, then again, with the, the graininess and the agriculturalness and then like the musty elements that come with that, it's like, eh, not my favorite. I, basically, there's a the, the barrel impact on this is so low that most of what you get is the grain and the fermentation and the yeast impact. Uh, I would be. I would love to see what happened to Swift if we got a lot more age, which they've been around for a long time. Right. I'd love to see really old Swift 
and see what happens when the barrel sort of pulls some of these notes down. Yeah. And and makes them feathers them out. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. So this is Ben Milam. And almost, this is a gift from Ben Milam and Magnificent Bastard. Yeah, this is That's Richie not... Klusner. Richie Klusner, you magnificent bastard. Fight. So this is great. This is, uh, they're sourced from Indiana. They changed their labels to let you know that they sourced this whiskey. Oh. They were not always doing that. Oh, this is, wait, this is MGP? This is MGP rye, oh, okay. most likely. I don't know if it's the really high rye mash, but I think they only have one in MGP, or they used to. That 95 rye, which was also what... I'm getting, um, like a... Redemption was using. I'm getting, like, a, a creamy caramel mm -hmm. out of this, more so than I typically remember from an MGP. I'm getting, I'm getting peppermint, but a peppermint ice cream. Oh, yeah, the cream. Right, where you get, like, the hard chunks of peppermint, but you're actually getting a creamy vanilla yeah, no, ice cream. Yeah, I can see that, I can see that. Yeah. This is just a really well-chosen barrel. I don't know how they blended it, or if it's more than one barrel, but... Caramel shows up on the taste. Oh, yeah. And then it's really nicely balanced against the cherry and the oak. You get that creamy element. 45.2%. It's got just enough the astringent bitterness J yeah. that it provides character yeah, instead that, of being only sweet. It's balanced against it right there. Man, if um, I wonder if this is since Heather got involved, because the flavor profile and the palate on this is yeah. so balanced. So he's talking about Heather Green. Heather Green is now uh, working with Ben Milam has taken over sort of the blending house and everything, and they're releasing a new line of whiskeys called Milam and Green. Yeah. Where it's all blending. Um, but this is just a really good rye. Yeah. I Lovely. actually like this one. There's the, the cherry I usually associate with more of a bourbon note, but I really like how it presents in a kind of a creamy way. Yeah, and I'm not a huge rye person, as we all know, but this one, this is like a summer whiskey. It's lovely. You know? Lovely whiskey. All right, rinse that glass so we can move on to the next one. I don't have to keep burning through glasses. Okay, we're going to do these two. Um, do, we, and do we want to do them in two separate glasses so we can compare back to back? These are the same whiskey, both from Shane and Kat. Kat Rajne and Shane Jeffcoat. Kat Rajne and Shane Jeffcoat, you may get it. <laughs> So this is the Witherspoon bourbon. I don't know if they're sourcing it or not, but each one of these is finished in a different barrel. That's a dark whiskey. Yeah. So one of these, the one on your right and my right and your... Oh, and you can see there's bits left in there too. Yeah. Charcoal bits. The one on the right is port. The one on the left is sherry cask. Wow. That astringent squeezed out tea bag mm -hmm. note on the nose there. These are the most wine cask nose bourbons I've ever smelled in my entire life. I wanted both of them to see if I was off on either of them, but these smell more like a scotch that was only ever in sherry cask more than it does a bourbon with a finish. Like, I smell sherry as 80% of the nose on this. I find on, and I find much more of a, a caramel. I get ruby port as the dominant nose on, or some kind of port, on as a dominant nose on this freaking whiskey. And I barely get that, like a third of the way in, the, the bourbon starts to go, yeah, it's corn. So, wow, on, on I love both, the nose on, on these. Both of them, on both of these, I get a really thick body. Yes. Of, uh, and it's like, again, the black tea, squeezed out tea bag oh, starts to so get a good. little, little stringent in the tea. This though, on top of that, um, whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on. This I get, uh, you know, like spent spent fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No sulfur. Yeah. Uh, it, well, it's um, gun burnt gun. Yeah, burnt gun. So like a struck match or burnt yeah. gunpowder. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's in there in the yeah. nose. It's in the taste of this one. This one though, I get more caramel. I know, but taste it. What you smell in here, you taste in here. This one, the nose is that sulfur, but the taste is a little more balanced. This is just like drinking sherry. Man. With a little dash of bourbon. You know what this is like? Like, I wonder if they dumped all the sherry out before they filled it with bourbon. You know what this is? This is 54%, so fairly high proof. These are great. You know what this is reminding me of? If Stag Jr., if the notes of Stag Jr. Was a sherry bourbon. Which it was sherry bourbon. Yeah. And not necessarily trying to strangle you to death. Right. It's basically you back it off, so we're not so violent. We're I have still never maintained. tasted anything like either of those ever before. Really? Yeah. Let's pull out the steak chain. I mean, I've had a lot of things that remind me of these, mm -hmm. uh, but never anything that stands alone like that. These, I've never really been a huge fan of what came out of Witherspoon as for my flavor profile. Okay. I would buy these and keep them in my house all the freaking time. Well, 
I love these. But let's also acknowledge... It's a unicorn. Yes. This is not bourbon. Don't buy this thinking you're buying bourbon. This is not classic you're not bourbon. buying bourbon. This is an exotic creature. And, uh, quite, quite frankly, for the mass market, I don't think these are mass market flavors. I think these are whiskey nerd flavors. Oh, no, no, there's no question. These are people wanting to go exploring, this funky not, adventure. I don't know where the stag is because we've got such a mess in here. Dude, these are remarkable. I don't really know what to tell you other than that. This tastes like sherry when someone dusted some bourbon into it. So, and this tastes... Those of you familiar with whiskey, the darkness that you see out of that? Yeah, it's... No, it's like... It's real. It's, yeah, what you would expect from that deeply dark intense. Not a huge fan of the nose on the port cask. Because of that really heavy, burnt, black powder note, mm -hmm. but the taste it's black powder is so, wonderful. There's some sweet, man, just a sweet, uh, like a, ah, it's like a jammy honey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, super interesting. So remarkable. Super interesting. Okay, we're doing Unamas. Okay. This is from Richie Olivier. Richie Olivier, you magnificent. Bastard! Fight! <laughs> it's like a, it's like a f switchblade. There's a there's, there's, there's fettered. So it's a note from Richie. Hello, oh, poor. fine whiskey gentleman. And Rex. <laughs> People love to do that. <laughs> uh, this whiskey comes all the way from South Africa. Had my brother bring me two bottles when he came to visit a few weeks ago. I grew up in South Africa but was not into whiskey back then, so I was shocked to hear South Africa made their own whiskey. I really wasn't expecting much, hoping for at least palatable, maybe something okay at best. Happily, I was proved completely wrong when I took my first sip. This one reminds me of- Oh wait, 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 don't say it. Because I think I just, something popped into my head. And it could be because the label looks very, very similar. Yeah. But I'm, um, just on the nose, I'm gonna go get a bottle right now. Okay. He, he had to cheat. You cheated. No, look at the bottles. You cheated. They're almost like, like he, someone was looking at that bottle when they designed three ships. He, 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 the, he is a cheater. You did cheating. Is it Kilomen? Kilomen. Did you smell it? It smells like Kilomen. I, well, I know, but there's like a thousand damn whiskeys in here. No, 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 but we just did Kilomen recently and I went, ah, oh, this smells like but, Kilomen. And it looks like the bottle. And he says Kilomen Macure Bay. Does he? It's the same bottle. Look at it. <laughs> No, I didn't know it was Machir Bay. I would have said 100% Isla, except that this bottle looks just like that. That is bizarre. I smell shenanigans. That was a 50% guess. <laughs> I smell shenanigans. That was 50%. This smells like Cologne, and then 50%. This is the bottle of Cologne that looks the most like this one. Oh, the peaty vegetal smoke on this. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is a 10-year-old malt. Oh, it doesn't taste like Cologne, though. No? It smells like Cologne, but it does not taste like Cologne. It's way too dry. It's super ashy dry. Look, if you like Isla, mm -hmm. you're gonna love this. You're gonna find some flavors you really like. They did like. a really good job. Wow. And uh, and I would say, it's ashy. cool, 10 years old, it's really cool that- it, Ashy's the word. They made it all. And then the sweet elements, it's like a salty sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's a salty sweetness in there. And now it's turning into honeysuckle in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh damn! I can taste that malt roundness still, even though it's it's a lot of barrel impact on this. I bet because they're in South Africa, they're getting a pretty significant temperature exchange. I'm surprised it's not darker than this, even after ten years. Ah, yeah, I like this one. This is good. So to confirm, I really like that. To confirm, you want to try it? Even though we just did five other whiskeys, Shh. we did. Someone's getting greedy. Less than five other whiskeys. I haven't had Macchiar Bay in a while. I don't remember what it tastes like. All right, so this actually has more rich, vibrant intensity in the flavors. The Macchiar Bay is a 46%, and the three ships is, what was the proof on this, did we say? 46, 46%. Look, um, what I'm gonna say is the differences between these are all in the very front of the palette and the finish is very similar, mm -hmm. but they, they start from two different directions before they land in that destination. You know what, though? But regardless, they're only about 15-20% apart from yeah, each other. they're definitely cousins. And it's mostly the directions they take to get to the same destination are different. You still get, you, you still land on the ash, you know? Yeah, it's, I mean, the finish is still the same. And it's like this cooked in a hotter climate. If you like Makir Bay and can get it, you're gonna love three ships. Yeah, that's impressive, South Africa, damn!
All right, I think we did it. We did the hell out of it. There's some good whiskeys in here. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.